camp counselors have read it. What is the most NSFW thing you've seen happen at camp? I was a counselor at a day camp. We took kids to the zoo. A kid shoved his thumb fully inside a petting zoo goat's butt. I asked him why, and he just shrugged looking at me, like I'm the idiot. I felt bad for the goat, but it was still standing next to him, so maybe it was into it. Day 1 at camp, we jumped out of the bus, and ran around, because we were so excited. My friend ran behind the bus and the bus ran him over. He was rushed off by ambulance, we didn't see him for another 3 months. I had two twin brothers, that were very handsy with each other. One day one of them came to me crying, because his brother had bit his tongue, after he tried kissing him. This summer I walked in on 5 15 to 16 year olds touching bow sacks together, while comparing testicle size. That was a fun incident report to fill out. Edit. For the record, the incident report doesn't get them in trouble, it's more of a thing to protect me, and the other counselors, if a kid were to tell their parents. I was working at a Young Life camp in Colorado probably 12 years ago. I think it was the first day right around dinner time and a girl just up and died. Her heart just stopped. She was sitting talking with her friends and fell over. It was incredibly intense and very sad for a lot of people and tons of people were there to witness it. It's not the most scandalous of camp stories, but it was certainly pretty up and put a weird vibe on the rest of the week. I was a camp counselor years ago, and while I don't recall really seeing anything NSFW with the kids, I can tell you almost everything I saw with the counselors was NSFW. I couldn't walk into a room without seeing people king, in tents, on top of the staff washing machines, in the general store. Parents, if you send your kids to camp, just remember, literally the only thing those counselors are thinking about is king each other. I worked at a sleepaway girl scout camp with all female counselors and staff, where a solid 60% were lesbian. There was a strictly enforced no walking in the bushes rule, because so many counselors would go at it anywhere they could find. Counselors having a threesome in an empty cabin next to the bathrooms. Had 6 year old campers at a day camp. After swimming, found two of them facing each other naked in the locker room. They were standing there, hitting each other's erect penises, and making the boeing boeing sounds. This actually happened earlier today. I work at a summer day camp at a local park with kids in kindergarten age group. Interesting slash gross things happen almost every day with kids at that age, but today's events took the cake. Basically the 6 year old boy found a dead bird in the grass, and decided it would be fun to pick it up, and smear the blood, and guts all over his hands and arms. After doing that, he started chasing around other campers, to try to share his bird entrails on them. I had the pleasure of catching the gore-covered kid, ripping the bird's ravaged carcass out of his hands, and spending half an hour in the bathroom getting him and myself cleaned up. When I asked him why the heck he picked up a dead animal he said, that he thought it was something awesome to do. There were these two kids, which we nicknamed Poo Poo Picasso and Gandhi. Both were in my friend's cabin, which was year to campers, so the kids were just out of third grade. So I guess they were around 8 or 9 years old. Anyway Poo Poo Picasso would smear his. He defecate inside of his trunk, and left it there for a day before my friend noticed the smell. He wrote on the walls of the bathrooms with his own fesses. It was disgusting. Now Gandhi didn't want to be at summer camp, despite it being a total blast. He wouldn't complain and ask to call home which he wasn't allowed to do, unless it was a rather serious situation. Fine we deal with this sometimes, but what we weren't expecting, was for him to go on a hunger strike. That's right, a hunger strike. He just would refuse to eat for several meals. He would break, and eat a ton of snacks during our afternoon refreshment period, when he thought we wouldn't notice. What made Gandhi really special is, that he learned how to vomit on command. To do so he would drink insane amounts of water. Then when we would ask him to do something he didn't want to do, he would just vomit everywhere. It was nasty, but at the same time typing this out is making me giggle. Eventually the two kids got over it I think. In high school I was a counselor at a community outdoor camp where a lot of the kids who attended were there just because their parents needed to put them somewhere. These kids were typically 8 to 12 years old. We would have to take the kids on hikes around the property, where we'd see a bunch of uninteresting animals, hang out by a pond or creek, 
then head back to the main center, where some animal expert would bring in a snake or owl, to give the children some excitement each day. One week we got these two little dudes who hated everything about the camp from the start, but they hated each other more than Samuel Jackson hates snakes on a plane. They were constantly finding creative ways to each other off throughout the week. On the last day of camp we had just finished a hike, and stopped by a creek, where everyone could rest and look for frogs or throw mud into the woods. Behind me I hear one of the two call the other uh, after which I slowly turned around, to see what the other one would do. The accused had picked up a half cinder block size rock, and was bringing over his head, so he could smash the back of the accuser's head in with it. Fortunately I was close enough to where I could grab the rock, before it came down on the other kid's unsuspecting head. TLDR, stopped a 12 year old from smashing another 12 year old's head, in with a rock the size of a 12 year old's head. I worked as a counselor at a camp for adults with disabilities. All my campers were in their 20s late 30s. One night one of my campers was masturbating loudly and furiously. Because we all slept in one giant room. Her noises were waking everyone up. It was so distracting that I had to give her the masturbation chat the next day and also explain it to all my campers privately. Boy what a fun day that was. Camper who spoke no English got a nasty head wound from a male on the cabin rafters that he facet dived into. Also so much counselor sex. Myself and the other counselors in training stayed over in the food meeting hall place one night with one of the counselors. Truth or death started happening. Someone trust this French exchange student chick. What's the farthest you've ever gone with someone? In broken English, she said something along the lines of, One time my cousin and I were together, and he put his balls on me motion to her crotch and we went like this humping motion. Silence lots of worried looks exchanged. Next person's turn. After reading about all the camp counselors having sex with each other, I've decided I'm gonna be a camp counselor. Saw a girl give a guy a HJ under a towel. On the bus. On the bus filled with children. On the bus, filled with children going to a Christian camp. I was a camp counselor a few years ago at a camp for foster kids. One week a counselor caught a camper, M15, in bed with another camper, F14. The room they were in was tiny, and the four other girls in the bunks were awake, and cheering them on. They were loud enough to wake the counselor, who pulled the male camper out of bed. The guy had a ziploc bag around his, held in place by a rubber band. I was both impressed at their dedication to trying to have safe sex, and appalled at how terribly they went about it. Finally something I can actually weigh in on. I work at a day camp for kids ages 4 to 13. I was with a group of about 10 kids, all 8 or 9 years old. One day before pool time one kid walked into the bathroom, got butt naked, then started crying, because he had lost his bathing suit. I went in trying to defuse the situation and he bolted. He ran around at top speed screaming and crying, flailing his arms all over the place. Do you know how illegal it looks for a 16 year old boy to chase a new date year old? Well I eventually caught the kid and brought him back to the bathroom. When I asked him what his bathing suit looked like, he pulled a bathing suit out and said it looks like this. Oh, had his bathing suit 6 feet from him the entire time. NSFW in that I should have never been told at work, I'm a camp director and we had a kiddo who was at camp for the first time, roughly 10 years old. Mom gave us a heads up that dad's health was failing, and she wanted her son to have a break and recoup, but we also might have some behavioral issues. Great, no problem. We'll take great care of him. She calls Wednesday to tell me dad died the night before. I extend my condolences and state that I'll quietly get her son packed, but not say anything to him. She says, no, I'm going to leave him there for now, I want him to have two more days of joy, before I break his little heart. It was the longest two days of my life, knowing this kid's world was going to shatter Friday afternoon. I had to tell a few other staff, so that we could be absolutely sure he had the best two days. It just so bad for the adults, obviously worse for the child, but you know what I mean. We heard rumors about the cabin next to us one week at camp. It was a game called Monkey, and it involved one of the kids getting naked and putting a sock over his. He'd then swing around the room using the bed frames and whatnot making monkey noises. To this day I'm not sure what the game was, I'm guessing you won if you didn't get raped. 
was checking rooms after everyone was supposed to have moved out. Found a 12-year-old king another 12-year-old male and coming just as I opened the door. They didn't hear me, so I waited a few minutes then knocked on the door and opened it to find two innocent kids packing their bags. They apologized for being slow to get out of their room. A 13-year-old girl trying to cut herself with a dull razor when she was upset. Two counselors having sex on the beach of a man-made lake. I didn't see this personally, but it was well known among the staff. It was at night, but campers were definitely within earshot. A 16-year-old boy making advances on a 10-year-old girl, fully knowing her age. We put a stop to that one real fast. Said 10-year-old girl making advances on a 19-year-old male counselor. After I told her to stop, she turned to me and asked if he and I working, point blank. The camp doctor from the local ER, he had two daughters at the camp, trying to sleep with several of the very young female counselors and walking into our cabins when he knew full well we would be changing. The owner's son smoking, we'd in full view of kids. My favorite on was a 13 year old boy at camp out. Both his hands were in his sleeping bag and he was clearly masturbating. His counselor called a hand check where you have to display both hands in the air. He only raised one hand. The counselor asked for both hands and he replied, give me 4 minutes. I worked as a junior counselor at a summer camper quite some years back that had kids aged 6 to 15. One camper, let's call him Billy, he was 10, was really homesick. Billy was very shy and awkward and you could tell something wasn't 100% right with him. Lights out was at 8 p.m., but they could use a lantern to read slash tell ghost stories slash other as long as they didn't disturb their bunkmates. Now, a few things happened while Billy was at camp. First thing, Billy was being made fun of by this other camper, we'll call him Jake. Jake was the typical my dad can beat up your dad brat. One night, Jake comes to the counselor cabin, crying. He said he woke up and someone was peeing on him and peeing in his mouth. He didn't know who, though, because he had piss in his eye and couldn't see. After asking around, nobody saw anything, so we documented it, reported it to the parent, and the mom came to get him. One down. Next incident was a few nights later. Another kid, we'll call him Chad, stole Billy's dinner and ripped up one of his Pokemon cards. Not sure if it was Pokemon, but it was a game card of some kind. That night, we hear yells coming from Billy's cabin. We run over and see Chad with a giant cut on his head and a broken vase. Apparently the vase had fallen off the shelf while Chad was sleeping and hit him. Billy had a eating grin the entire time. Chad needed 8 stitches and apparently had some skull fractures. Not sure how accurate the skull fracture part was, other counselors talked. Two down. The last and final thing that happened was about a week after the vase incident. Another kid, we'll call him Derek, was having a rough time at camp. He was also homesick and missed his parents. I figured Derek and Billy would get along great. I was wrong. Long story short, Billy was found in one of the closets, shoving a broomstick handle into Derek's, but while Derek cried and touched Billy's, they had their parents called, and they were both kicked out of camp. I come to find out, 15 years later, that Billy's father was manipulating and sexually abusing him almost every night, and that's just how he thought you made friends. To this day, I know the tale of Billy lives on as the craziest thing that's ever happened at that camp.